All right, we're back here. We have we have our pumpkin uh, pretty much sufficiently scooped out. Uh, you can see right here in my tray, uh, I emptied the contents of the pumpkin. Now we're ready to uh, actually maybe draw a, uh, a face on the outside that we could do some carving. Uh, of my carving utensils here, I have uh, kind of a little tool just to poke holes in it. So if you want to do like a dots uh, throughout, you could do that. Um, there's uh, one that's kind of a V-shape that will help you probably cut some corners. And then a smaller knife that's really fine on the end, uh, maybe to do some fine detail work. But I'll stick with the big ones because I'm not doing anything detailed. Mine's going to be very basic. Uh, but also uh, uh, with that, probably most traditional. Uh, the first thing I did when I got here this morning uh, was uh, do a little paperwork, but I wanted to get... Um, uh, some coffee going <laughs> and uh, so I had to pour a cup of coffee uh, and I really enjoy my coffee I hope you do too and uh, coffee is probably one of those social drinks that's uh, you can have around the world in any, any country and enjoy and enjoy the company of someone else and here I am enjoying some coffee while I'm uh, carving a pumpkin this morning and I'm reminded of a lot of things uh, I'll tell you a quick story before I start and um, Kind of a funny story, my mother, when, uh, when I was growing up, and I think I've shared this one early on in some videos, but my mother um, taught me at age, I don't know, six or seven, um, to boil water. And she had um, either Maxwell House or some other uh, freeze-dried coffee, Folgers, Froat Folgers, I remember that, coffee, and it was, uh, it was instant. So I would uh, boil water in the stove, and then I would put a spoon, and she would always say, put a heaping teaspoon of coffee in the cup. I did that. Then I poured the boiling water from the pan as a child uh, into the cup, stirred it. And my mom would always say, Preston, put an ice cube in it too now. After I stirred it really well, uh, the boiling water went in and she wants an ice cube. And I asked her, why do you want to put an ice cube in your coffee? She said, it just cools the top of the coffee enough her to take her first sip. I said, okay. And so I did that and she would always take a big sip of it and say, oh, Preston, that is the best coffee I've ever had. And that encouraged me to do it again for her. And so I did that for a while, I think when I was growing up. And uh, of course, uh, I really didn't get into drinking coffee until I turned 45 years old. Not too long ago, I went to a seminary and I think I needed coffee to stay awake. And uh, I started drinking coffee and uh, I've been drinking it ever since. And my mother drank her coffee black. And, uh, and that's the way I drink it too, because I would always try to sneak a sip of her coffee and it was bitter and nasty, I thought. Uh, but here I am now, every time I drink it, I think of my mother. Um, and uh, so let's fast forward in my story a few years. I, I got married and uh, we bought our, Karen and I, we bought a coffee maker. And um, so I, made some coffee and I said, honey, and I didn't, we didn't uh, really drink coffee, uh, but my wife did occasionally and I was making her coffee. So how do you pick your coffee? I don't know. Uh, how do you want your coffee? She said black. So I poured a cup of coffee for my wife and turned around to bring it to her. And again, this is uh, years and years later from my childhood. And as I turned to hand her coffee to her, she said, honey, can you put an ice cube in it just to cool it off a little bit? And right then, I realized that my mother and my wife were a lot more alike than I ever would have hoped for or dreamed of. Uh, but uh, I, I was kind of taken aback uh, there at that moment when uh, she uh, enjoyed her coffee the same way my mother did. And it was kind of odd. And if you like coffee, uh, you'll understand the coffee drinkers, uh, sometimes they're connoisseurs, they like their certain type, types of coffee. I wouldn't call myself a connoisseur, I do like a good smooth coffee. Uh, I don't like it like a French roast, really dark and really, uh, uh, I, I'll call it bitter. They say bold, but I think it's a little more bitter. But um, I like it just a nice mellow cup of coffee uh, and, uh, and I'm happy with that. Um, coffee is a great drink again. But I think that, you know, we go back to the beginning of time when God was creating the world. Uh, at one point during that, uh, that six-day creation experience, God did make coffee. 
And I believe his words were after he made the coffee. You know what he said? He said, it, it is good. And uh, of course, that may not be found in the scriptures, but uh, I thought I'd throw it in there anyway. And I still enjoy my coffee. Well, today, again, we're going to be finishing the cutting of our, uh, our jack-o'-lantern. And uh, I want to find a, a place. I want to do the this side of it because this side looks a little messed up. So I want to take the prettiest side and make that where our face is going to be. So I'm just going to, uh, uh, instead of doing the traditional triangle eye, I may add a little... Uh, uh, angles on here that would make it a little different and something like that I don't know if you can see it or not but we'll cut it and you'll be able to see it and uh, and maybe a, a, a jaggedy type of mouth and not not the traditional mouth and I'm going to uh, uh, start in the corner here maybe work my way around and uh, Maybe draw some teeth in here and another one there and maybe another one here and maybe something like that. Hopefully it'll look better once it's cut, but once we get something drawn there, again, I want to emphasize I'm just doing this as a very basic jack-o'-lantern that I could do quickly for the sake of the video and so you won't be going to sleep on me at home. And I am cutting it. Matter of fact, I'm cutting it a little larger in this case than my drawing on there. So uh, you won't be able to see the marker uh, when I am done. Okay. And there is the first eye. So we'll pop that out. And you can see right there, I've got the first one. There we go. Better view of it. And I'm going to do one here on the other side. And again, they're not going to be... Uh, exactly alike because I want him to appear to have a face that is maybe contorted a little bit maybe he has he's having a squinty eye or something he's not really happy pumpkin he just kind of kind of squinting at you uh, and so there's the other one and so there's the both eyes if you can see those there you go and now let me try working the mouth which may be a little more difficult because again I'm not an artist or an expert at virtually anything, but I want to go ahead and cut these teeth out real good, and then we'll get started uh, with the last segment of it would be to uh, perhaps light it. Okay, all right. Got that done, and let's go on down here the bottom and uh, I'm thinking now that I probably could have brought some tools from my toolkit at home and worked on it as well this is kind of like a coping saw almost <laughs> because I guess technically I would be coping uh, some edges here and getting it done and now I just finished I believe cutting out the mouth so uh, if you work quickly oh, and I probably will go ahead and maybe cut some of the inside out because again this this pumpkin is very very thick and I want to be able to uh, have as much of the inside or the holes exposed to bring some of the light from the inside so now that I've made a good mess here, see what you think, and uh, be prepared to uh, create some great uh, Halloween memories with your children and grandchildren. And uh, these are some of the things that I want to continue to do in my household um, because I have these great memories of my grandparents uh, and what they did uh, when I was growing up, uh, whether it be um, my grandmother always cooking, uh, my uh, grandfather uh, always joking around with me and teasing me and uh, we would go hikes in the woods and go hunting and all that great stuff and sitting around and pump, uh, pumpkin carving uh, is something that uh, 
would be probably a lot of fun, be a lot of fun for you as well. So uh, uh, one last note on these, uh, I did read somewhere where you can take a, a maybe a 10% bleach solution, maybe a little bit of bleach, this much water, this much bleach. Uh, you spray it out on the inside, uh, rinse it out, dump it. And what that will do will keep some of the uh, bacteria from forming because your pumpkins do rot, uh, especially if the weather changes, it gets a little warmer. So if you'll spray it down, maybe on the inside with a little bit of bleach and water mixed together that may be able to keep your pumpkin intact a little bit longer, maybe closer to the uh, Halloween holiday. And so with that, this concludes our quick and easy pumpkin carving uh, for this Friday. Uh, the next segment is going to be on uh, household safety and, uh, and maybe a couple of notes as well. With that, you take care. Have a great afternoon or morning, and God bless you. Enjoy your weekend, and happy pumpkin carving.